So now we're going to look at a couple of means to try and increase the gain of the operational amplifier. We have a couple of different ways that we can do this. One way is that we can cascode the amplifier. And of course the reason that this works is it leads to higher output resistance. And since our gain is a product of output resistance and transconductance, this means higher gain. Another way that we can do it is by using a cascade. And in a cascade, we have a gain that's the product of several stages, so it's very large. Now, in either case, there are drawbacks to doing either of these techniques. In the cascode technique, we'll see what the drawbacks are today, and we'll start looking at the cascade technique in the coming days and see what the drawbacks are to those. So let's start with a cascode te uh, technique, and we'll look first at what we call the telescopic cascode. So in the tele telescopic cascode, we start with our normal cascode current source as the load. Need a reason to drive a Ford with EcoBoost technology? I got 10. I feel like I'm driving. So a lot of transistors to draw, obviously. And we'll draw an ideal current source at first. Oops, current source, not voltage source. We'll tie the gates of transistors M3 and M4 to some bias voltage, VB. And this is just a DC bias voltage. And of course, M5 and M6, we have a current mirror. M7 and M8, we have a current mirror. And we take our output between M4 and M6. Now M2 is, the gate of M2 is the inverting input. Uh, because this is basically a common source amplifier and common source amplifiers are inverting. And so here is our differential gain. Now, we know that big GM in this case is just equal to little GM1 or little GM2. GM1 and 2 are the same, so either GM would work. And we need to find the output resistance. And to do that, we need to find first what's R looking up and what's R looking down. Now, R looking up is fairly easy. R looking up is R06 times 1 plus GM6 times R. O eight, and we're neglecting body effect in this case. And we can say that this is approximately equal to GM6 times RO6 times RO8. R looking down, we first need to find the impedance looking into the drain of M2. And to do that, we need to find the impedance looking into the source of M1. So here we see a 1 over GM1 looking into the source of M1. At this point, at the drain of M2, then we would see RO2 times 1 plus GM2 times 1 over GM1, 
which is equal to 2 RO2. This is assuming that GM1 is equal to GM2. So then R down sees this resistance as the R dollar sign for M4. So R down now becomes RO4 times 1 plus GM4 times 2 RO2. Assuming that GM4 times 2 R2 is much bigger than 1, we can say that this is approximately equal to GM2 GM4 times RO2 times RO4. Now if we put our test voltage source at this node, at the output node, Vx, and measure the current that flows in here, we would see Ix is equal to Vx divided by R down plus Vx divided by R up plus, remember, all the current that goes down here, so all this Vx divided by R down current comes up through the transistor into the current mirror and gets mirrored up. So we would get one more Vx over R down. When all is said and done, what that effectively does is it divides this R down term by 2. So we have, we'd have an R down in parallel with R down. So we can say that our R total is equal to GM6 RO6 R, uh, times RO8 in parallel with GM4 times RO2 in parallel with RO4. If we were to make some, uh, sorry, not, not in parallel, that's just times RO4. If we were to make some simplifying assumptions uh, that all the ROs are equal and all the GMs are equal, then we would say that this was approximately equal to GM times RO squared over 2. And that our total voltage gain would then be equal to GM squared RO squared over 2, or the product of big GM times R total. Now, if we were thinking about what we did here, we just increased the voltage gain. This voltage gain is much bigger than the, than the single, or th than the standard current mirror loaded differential pair. But at what cost? Well, the cost is we gave up voltage headroom. So now we have a couple of transistors that are uh, stacked in a series uh, that end up needing to be saturated, and so we have to worry about keeping those transistors saturated. So. Let's look at a couple of cases. Maybe what we'll do first, though, is think about what the bandwidth is. So if we look at what the bandwidth of our circuit is, we just found R total. We know R total is equal to GM6, RO6, RO8, and parallel with GM4, RO8. For RO2. C total, looking at the picture, is going to include a CDG6 plus a CDG8, or sorry, 4, CDG4, plus a CDB4, plus a CDB6, plus whatever capacitance we tie to the load. Now remember, it's bad to include this load capacitance in our frequency response because our frequency response will change as the load changes. Now we know that our output high frequency pole is going to be equal to 1 over R total times C total. And thinking qualitatively, 
our bandwidth is much smaller for this circuit than it was for our standard current mirror loaded source coupled pair because our R total for our cast code is a much bigger number. Now one other thing to mention here is our R total at the output is very high and remember for an operational amplifier we'd like to see a relatively low voltage. Okay, so let's now look at what the maximum and minimum voltages are for this device, and we'll do that in the next set of slides.